dear listener, this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow, mpezi msikilizaji, wanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu cha nne. Leo tunaendelea na uchambuzi wa riwaya inayoitwa This Time Tomorrow uliyoandikwa na Ngugi wa Siongo mwaka 1976. Katika hii riwaya inajaribu kuzungumzia masuala ya unyanyasaji au unyang'anyi wa ardhi katika nchi ya Kenya. So today we are proceed with a play called This Time Tomorrow written by playwright called Ngugi wa Siongo year 1976. So I'm going to analyze this play by considering types of elements of literature which is a form and the content. Content of kuchambua hii liwaya kwa kuangalia fani na mauzui. So, let us proceed with the title of a play. Playwright, year, setting, style, characters, themes, figure of speech, and so on. So, I'm going to start with the title of a play. Title of a play called This Time Tomorrow is a reflection of the future life of the people who lived at the whole market. Wanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu na cha nne napenda muelewe kwamba tunapozungumzia kichwa cha habari au kichwa cha kitabu cha kitabu cha riwaya inayoitwa This Time Tomorrow kinajaribu kuzungumzia e, maisha ya watu ambao wanaoishi nchi ya Kenya ambao maeneo ya uhuru market ambao wanaangalia sana kwamba maisha yao ya baadaye yatakuwaje so in the title of a play this time tomorrow we are consider by looking some of characters who give a title of a play so the first in jago jago is asking herself where shall I I be this time tomorrow. This show has state of disappointment when the city council decided to demolish the slum. She says nowhere to go. Eh tunaangalia muhusika kabisa ambaye yeye ndo ametupa title ya riwaya ambao this time tomorrow ambaye ni Njago. Njago alikuwa anazungumzia anaulizia kwamba kwamba where shall I be this time tomorrow? kwa title ya riwaya tunaipata kwa njago ambayo alikuwa anaulizia kwamba kwamba maisha yetu ya kesho au ya baadaye atakuwaje kwamba tutaenda wapi na hii hapa imeonyesha kwamba mtu ambaye amekata tamaa kabisa na maisha maana walikuwa wananyang'anywa ardhi zao kwamba wanafukuzwa kwenye eneo lao la ardhi wanaambia kwamba waende sehemu nyingine sasa wanauza kwamba tutaenda wapi na wajui kwamba hiyo sehemu ni sehemu ipi Jago voice represent all of slum dwellers Whose slum were demolished, they are all wondering where they are going to spend their future lives, because the slum have been their only home. Mwanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu wale kwamba hii sauti tunayopata kwa njago inawakilisha watu wote ambao la lahoi, ambao wako naishi katika eneo la uhuru market, maisha ambao wameishi, watu naishi sasa ambao ni maisha ya tabu, maisha magumu. Hmm? Sasa ye, isa, sauti ambayo anaongea Njago anawakilisha wale wenzake wale walalaho watu maskini. Maana maisha yao ni magumu, wamenyanyanywa ardhi na hawajui kwamba sehemu ya kwenda kukaa ni wapi. Kwa hiyo uelewe kwamba tunaozungumzia kwa ujumla ya this time tomorrow inajaribu kuzungumzia eh, maisha ya watu wa Kenya ambao ni maisha yao ni magumu, hmm? wananyanganywa ardhi kwa hiyo inazungumza inazungumza masuala ya land conflict. Yeah. Kwa hiyo riwaya kwa ujumla dhamira kuu inazungumza land conflict kwamba migogoro ya kiarizi. The land was taken when they were fighting for independence. Example shoemaker say 
it is not that I don't want to move, but the government should give me a place to go. This is shown on page 48. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going Hili waya imeandi kwa bada ya uhuru, miaka sabina sita. Amboi kwa jaribu, watu walikuwa na pigania alisi zao. Ndwa manu kumbuke kwa mba. Hili waya inatupa e, mre, mrejeshu wa miaka ya nyuma kapusa wa kipindi cha maumau. Miaka ya fonji miatisa msina mbili, hadi ya fonji miatisa msina tisa maumau. Nchi ya Kenya yikuwa na pigania uhuru wake. Pamoja na sana sana upande wa alisi. Watu nataka wapate alisi zao. Ziwe huru. Ndwa manu kiangalia hapa tu kwa napigania. Huru tunangalia muhusika na itwa shumeka. Huni nifundi viatu. Ambayo alijaribu kusema kwa mba. It is not that I don't want to move. But the government should give me a place to go. This is shown page 48. Tunangalia katika ukulasa wa bana nani. Huru shumeka. Mfundi viatu ya alikuwa na anuisha kwa mba. Nitu ambaye na pingana. Hea na kata. Kuondoka katika inaolake. Ana kwa mba. Sasa serikali basi ituambie kwa mbao itupeleke sehemu ambapo tutaenda kuishi. So, hii kwa ni sehemu ya title of the play ambayo ni nilangalia ni kichwa cha liwaya yetu. Ambayo ni nilangalia kuzungumia maswa ya land conflict. Yani migokolo ya kiarizi. Mwanzo, paka mwisho. Watu wananyanganyo maeneo yao. Hmm? Wanapigania maeneo yao kwa mba ya sije ya kanyanganyo. Kwa mwanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu uelewe kwamba na uzungumza title of a play tunazungumza kwamba ni ni, kipa, ni kichwa mm. kichwa cha kitabu kwamba kina reflect na kweli kichwa cha kitabu kina kinahusiana na vitu ambavyo vilivyomo ndani ya kitabu mimi naye kupa hii story au naye chambua hii story naitwa mwalimu katika doto njige mwalimu wa fasihi ya Kiingereza so let us look uh, playlight tunazungumza playlight tunazungumza kwamba huyu ni mwandishi Hmm. Mwandishi wa liwaya Playlight ni mwandishi wa liwaya Mwandishi wa liwaya tuna, anaitwa Ngugi wa Siongo hmm. tuna, Tunafahamu kwamba ni Ngugi wa Siongo Kwa ni, ni, ni mtu wa Kenya eh. Dan Tunafahamu kwamba Ngugi wa, Ngugi wa Siongo Amezalua mwake fonji miatisa salasina nane Ambe na ya meanza kazi zake za uandishi mwake fonji miatisa stina mbili Na alianza na play inaitwa Black Hamity na muelewe lakini baadaye akaja kuandika fonji 1964 novo yake ya kwanza ambayo inaitwa Whip Not Chad mwaka 65 aliandika e, novo nyingine so the river between na mwaka wa 67 aliandika novo nyingine to a grain of wheat kwa ukiangalia na nili vitabu vyake amejaribu kuandika mfano system system to more imeandikwa miaka ya sabini mm system imeandikwa miaka ya sabini kwa sasa tuangalia kwamba huyu mwandishi playwright Ngugi wa Siongo amejaribu kuandika kazi zake nyingi sana zina zinahusiana masuala ya alizi pamoja na dini ambao watu wananyang'anya alizi zao na watu walikuja wengine wa wazungu walikuja kwa njia ya dini kunyang'anya alizi yao na tufahamu kwamba hii tunazungumza mwaka hii diwaya imeandikwa miaka ya sabini, fonji miaka sabini ambayo inajaribu kuzungumza masuala ya alizi so let us look on setting setting We know that uh, the area where a story takes place. Nangani ni sehemu ambayo na nili kisa cha story kina zungumzia. Setting. The setting is Kenya after independence. The specific setting is the whole market. In Nairobi City, the setting can represent many African countries. Nangani angalia manzari. Manzari ni Kenya bada wa. Bada ya uhuru ambayo nijaribu kuzungumzia eneo la uhuru market ambayo ni Nairobi city ambayo inajaribu kuhakikisha e, nchi za Kiafrika au nchi ya Kenya watu baada ya kupata uhuru watu walikuwa wana struggle e, na maisha yao sasa upande wa ardhi ndio maana manzari ya hii diwaya ni nchi ya Kenya so let us look on style style mtindo tunaangalia mtindo The playwright has employed a number of techniques in his play. Tunaangalia kwamba eh, Ngugi wa Siongo amejaribu kutumia techniki mba, mitindo mbalimbali ya uandishi wa riwaya. First dialogue, ametumia eh, dialogue mazungumzo baina ya watu eh, au mtu mmoja na mwingine. Also use flashback when Tin Smith narrate his past life before independence. Tunangata na kuna ametumia flashback ambayo tunaona kwamba huyu Tin Smith tunaangalia kwamba huyu 
ni mtu ambaye ni fundi ambaye anayetengeneza masuala ya sufuria eh, anauza vitu mbalimbali ambaye anajaribu kutuonyesha kwamba anaanza kutulejesha eh, maisha ya nyuma baada kabla hawajapata uhuru kwamba walikuwa wanapigana na yeye tunaona kwamba ni mtu ambaye alikuwa na struggle kupigania uhuru wa nchi ya Kenya Tin Smith also ngugi use the use of song which the freedom fighter sing na ndio kuona kwamba ngugi wa Siyoma amejaribu kutumia mtindo mwingine katika diwa yake katumia masuala nyimbo e, nyimbo zimetumika ambazo ni nyimbo zinazozungumza masuala ya uhuru kipindi wanakuwa wanapiga wanapigania also let us look on characterization and character tunaangalia kwamba characterization is a process of choosing character and also character is a people mm, who portrayed by playwright in his oha book tunaangalia kwamba characterization tunaucha tunaangalia kwamba uhusika mm. Catalyzation ni tunazungumza kwamba ni ile kitendo cha mwandishi mwenyewe kuchagua wahusika kwamba ni wapi awatumie na character tunaangalia kwamba hao ni watu ambao wao walio tumia na mwandishi ndani ya, ya kitabu kuonyesha au kufikisha ujumbe kwa hazira so the first character njango njango she is she is a tribalist because she is against intra trabo media. Tunaangalia kwamba Njago huyu hapa alikuwa ni mtu ambaye ameshikilia masuala ya ukabila. Ukabila ameushikilia sana kwa sababu yeye alikuwa alikuwa yuko tofauti kabisa na masuala ya kwamba mtoto wake yaolewe na kabila jingine. She says to Wanjiro with that man from another tribe. This on page 55. Tunaona kwamba yeye alikuwa hataki kabisa mtoto wake kwamba aolewe na na na, na mtu mwingine kutoka kabila jingine na hii imeonyeshwa katika ukurasa wa msini na tano she is a poor slum dweller because she sleep on the floor with her daughter tunaanza kumwangalia tena njango ni mtu ambaye ni maskini ambaye anawakisha watu ambao ni walalahoi eh, watu ambao maisha ni, maisha ya duni kwa sababu yeye tunaona kwamba alikuwa analala chini eh, alikuwa analalia sandarusi mifuko chini na pamoja na mtoto wake kwa hiyo tunaona kwamba Njago ni mtu ambaye ni maskini katokeo maisha yake ni, ma, ni magumu she is a widow hmm? her husband was captured and shot like a dog by the white man tunaona kwamba ni mjane eh. Njango ni mjane kwa sababu mume wake alikamatwa na na, na wakoro ni kipindi walikuwa wanapigania wana, wana masuala ya, ya alizi kwa hiyo yeye mume wake alikuwa yuko against na kunyang'anya na alizi zake lakini wazungu wa koloni mabebelu walimuua kwa risasi kwa jango akabaki mjane she's a pet business man she's a pet business woman she's selling soup to slum dweller as one of her custom comment give me mug of soup you got to be taught to live in this market decision page 45 tunaona kwamba kwamba njango ni mwanamke ambaye anajishughulisha masuala ya biashara eh ni mfanya biashara huyu mama kwa sababu alikuwa anauza supu katika maeneo ambayo ni walahoi wenzake maisha ambayo ni ambao watu ambao wanaishi maisha ya duni yeye alikuwa anajishughulisha masuala ya supu kwa ni mpambanaji ni mama ambayo anayefanya biashara na hapa tunaona katika ukurasa wa bana tano pale mtu anaposema give me mug of soup ana mtu anaagiza supu apewe also she is hard worker maza kwa ni mama ambaye ni mpambanaji mchapa kazi she is a tra- tra- she is a traditionalist eh, ni mtu ambaye ameshikia masuala ya kimila hmm. she deni wanjiro to marry a man from another tribe kwa sababu ameshikia masuala ya mila ndo mama mtoto wake wanjiro alikuwa hataki aolewe na mtu mwingine kutoka kabila jingine. Eh, my name is teacher Kaliko Doto Njige. Eh, kwa majina anaitwa Mwalimu Kaliko Doto Njige. Also let us look a second character called Wanjiro. She is lazy and stubborn. She like good life but does not want to work hard. Eh, tunaangalia kwamba muziki mwingine wa pili anaitwa Wanjiro. Wanjiro kwamba huyu ni mtoto wa ni mtoto wa njango ambaye ni mvivu na ni msumbufu katika familia yao maana yeye anapenda maisha mazuri lakini kazi hapendi she has true love despite warning from her mother that she should stay away from asinjo 
because she cannot marry a man from another tribe. Tunaweza kuona nani ile Wanjiro ni mtoto ambaye ana mapenzi mema kwa mama yake maana alikuwa anatii maneno aliyokuwa anaambiwa na mama yake kwamba usije ukaolewa na mwanaume kutoka kabila jingine. Also she learn away from problem. Wanjiro believe that learning away from problem is a way of solving problem. She learn away with a singe is a way of avoiding with poor condition at home. Hapa tunaona katika mwisho wa kitabu kabisa tunaona kwamba Wanjiro baadaye alikimbia tatizo ambaye tatizo lenyewe yeye alikuwa tatizo la umaskini. Kwa kabidi aende kwa Asinjo ambaye ni mpenzi wake kwa ajili ya kwenda kuishi naye pamoja kwa sababu maisha alishindwa kuvumilia maisha magumu katika nyumbani kwao. Kwa kabidi aende akaolewe na Asinjo ambaye ni mtu kutoka kabila jingine. Also she say uh, we look on page 55 when Asinjo says that, uh, his mother says that say she say to her mother I'm going with him you are old you don't know the way of the world or the need of young men this on page 55 but unaona kwamba eh wanjiro anamwambia mama yake njango kwamba mimi acha mimi niondoke niende kwa asinjo maana wewe hutaki kubadilika au ndani na dunia jinsi inavyoenda also she is a victim of woman discrimination she is not sent to school but her mother was sent to their uncle to attend school she complained that when is my brother you sent him to my uncle in the country so that he might attend school me you kept her to work for you this is on page 39 hapo tunaanza kuona kwamba huyu ni muhanga eh muhanga ambaye tunazungumza ni mwanamke ambaye ni binti ambaye anaonekana kwamba ni nyanyaso kwa sababu alikuwa hajapelekwa hata shule lakini bab, kaka yake alikuwa amepelekwa shule hapo tunaona kwamba ni unyanyasaji wa kijinsia kwamba yeye hajapelekwa shule lakini kaka yake amepelekwa shule ndio maana tunaona katika ukurasa wa 39 ya wanjiro yeye alikuwa anasema kwamba where is my brother you send him to my uncle in the country so that he might attend school me you kept here to work for you na hapo tunaona kwamba alikuwa analamika sana huyu wanjiro maana hajapelekwa shule sasa wanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu na cha nne ni jaribu kuambia kwamba huyu ngugi wa siongo vitabu vyake vyote riwaya pamoja na tamthilia ambayo ni novel play amejaribu sana kuzungumia masuala ya alizi masuala ya migogoro ya alizi masuala ya dini vitabu vyote kwa sababu nchi ya Kenya ni vitu ambavyo hivyo sana ni jaribu ni migogoro mikubwa sana katika nchi ya Kenya watu wanahangaika masuala ya alizi wanavyonyanyaswa kipindi cha kabla hawajapata uhuru na baada ya kupata uhuru watu walikuwa wananyanyaswa alizi zao na masuala ya dini ambao wakoloni walikuja kwa njia ya dini kwa convince ili chukulie alizi zao na hapo ukiangalia hata kuna riwaya inayoitwa Almeri when they want ambayo iko kidato cha tano na cha sita wanafunzi wanasoma lakini ukiangalia na hiyo inajaribu kuzungumza masuala ya hata alizi ambao tunaona kuna kwa maana ukiangalia hapa na nili wanjiro alikuwa hajapelekwa shule hata kuna muhusika anaitwa Gasoni na yeye alikuwa hajapelekwa shule wazazi wake alikuwa haja hajampeleka kwa tunaona kama masuala ya unyanyasaji wa kijinsia let us look uh, also another characters uh, said character muhusika wa tatu ambao anaitwa Asinjo He's a taxi driver. Huyo alikuwa ni mwendesha ta- taxi. Mm. This shown page 50. I'm no longer without a job. I'm a taxi driver. Baba tunaona kwamba alikuwa anazungumza kwamba yeye mwenyewe asinje kwamba yeye ni driver wa taxi. He's a west nized. He commented that Jango is only an old woman who does know the way of the world. All the need of young man. Baba tunaona kwamba ni ni kijana, asinje ni kijana ambaye eh amelimika ambaye ame, ame adapt eh ameiga maisha ya Ulaya maisha ya nje eh kwa ni kijana wa kisasa hapo tunaona tunaanza kujiona kwamba Zamida anaitwa modernity eh maisha ya kisasa he lopes with uh, wanjiro fine wanjiro leave her alone mother and go to live with asinjo hapo tunaona kuanza kwamba baadaye sasa eh asinjo alikuwa wanapendana na wanjiro kama tunaona kwamba baadaye wanjiro 
alimkimbia mama yake akaenda kwa Sinjo kuishi kwanza maisha yao he has to love for wanjiro alikuwa ni alikuwa ana mapenzi mazuri eh, mapenzi mema kwa wanjiro he is an agent for change alikuwa ni kijana ambaye anajaribu kuibadilisha jamii hmm? jamii alikuwa lengo la kujamii also let us look another another character the fourth character msika wa nne anaitwa stranger hmm? huyu ni mgeni stranger He's against oppression, humiliation and exploitation. He's using his intellect to help the slum dweller but later arrested by the police. Hapo tunaanza kwamba stranger huyu ni mgeni ambaye alikuwa anajaribu kuikomboa kui, kui e, jamii ya Kenya ambaye alikuwa against the masuala ya unyanyasaji. Hmm? Unyanyasaji ndio maana yeye alijaribu kupigania, kuwasaidia au ma slum dweller ba, lakini baadaye kaja kuonyeshwa alikamatwa na polisi eh maana alikuwa ameitisha kwenye mkutano amekaa kwenye mkutano lakini wale walipojitokeza mapolisi wananchi walikimbia kwa kawa wamebaki peke yake baadaye akawa amekamatwa na polisi he is betrayed by the slum dweller when the police appear at the meeting ground all the slum dweller run away leaving him alone to be arrested by the police ndi kama nivyo sema mwanzo ni kwamba alisalitiwa na na wananchi eh ambao ni salamu dola walimsaliti pale walipoonekana polisi wamekuja ile eneo walikuwa wameitisha mkutano wao lakini akakamatwa na polisi huyo anaitwa ni stranger he believe in unity and not in magic power tunaweza kuangalia kwamba huyo stranger ni mtu ambaye alikuwa anaamini katika masuala ya umoja alikuwa anaamini katika nguvu za giza yeye alikuwa anaamini umoja tukiungana tutashinda matatizo yetu also let us look at another character called Shoemaker eh who ni mfundi viatu Shoemaker he's a slum dweller na yeye kwani ni mtu ambaye ni mlalahoi eh the land was taken and he had no job ardhi yake ilichukuliwa na alikuwa hana kazi yoyote he's illiterate he's unable to to tell his age ni mtu ambaye alikuwa hajasoma Shoemaker ni mtu huyu ni mtu alikuwa hajasoma alikuwa hawezi hata alikuwa hajui hata umri wake he's an ex freedom fighter and active member of the ruling party. Mhm. Alikuwa ni mtu ambaye alikuwa ni mpambanaji. Huyo eh, alikuwa alipambana katika kupigania uhuru wa nchi ya Kenya. Mhm. He's a shoemaker. Alikuwa ni nifundi viatu. Also let us look another characters called Tin Smith. He work as Tin Tin Smith. Huyo eh, alikuwa ni naye mtu ambaye ni mpambanaji anatengeneza vitu mbalimbali, eh, mikate e panga majembe e, vitu mbalimbali his literate e, naye alikuwa hajui kusoma hata umri wake alikuwa hujui he has done many jobs during the war of independence and after it huyu tin smith alikuwa ni mtu ambaye alikuwa anafanya kazi mbalimbali hata kipindi cha vita yeye alikuwa anapika chakula na vitu mbalimbali kwa ajili kipindi cha watu wanapigania uhuru wa Kenya He is among the poor slum dweller. Hmm. Naye alikuwa ni mtu ambaye ni mlalahoyo, anaishi maisha yake ni magumu. E, kuna wasika mwingine ambao ni kiongo, hao ni mapolisi. Hmm. Hao ni kiongo ni mapolisi ambao walikuwa na wakamata, ambao walikuwa upande wa wakoloni, walikuwa na wakamata wananchi katika hao tunaita wa slum dweller. <coughs> Mpenzi msikilizaji wanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu uelewe kwamba tunapozungumzia hii riwaya ya this time tomorrow inajaribu kuzungumzia masuala ya ardhi katika nchi ya Kenya watu walinyang'anywa ardhi zao kwao maisha yako yao yalikuwa ni magumu ndio maana tunaweza kumuona mhusika anaitwa Njango alikuwa anasema kwamba where i will be live this time tomorrow kwamba alikuwa anauliza kwamba tunaenda kuishi wapi maisha yetu ya baadaye atakuwaje tumenyang'anywa ardhi zetu maisha yamekuwa magumu na serikali sasa ituonyeshe kwamba wapi tutaenda ndio maana tunaweza kuona kwamba shoemaker alijaribu na yeye kuwa against na unyanyasaji wa ardhi yeye akasema kwamba basi serikali ituonyeshe wapi sehemu tutaepo enda kuishi kwa muelewe kwamba this time tomorrow inazungumzia masuala ya ardhi eh land conflict kwa muelewe kwamba nazojaribu kuzungumzia masuala ya land conflict ambayo e, serikali kama serikali yenyewe ikaanza kujaribu kunyang'anya ardhi ndio maana wakati wa ukoloni watu wa Kenya walikuwa wananyang'anywa ardhi na wakoloni 
na wakati tena walipopata uhuru lakini kitendo cha unyang'anyi wa alizi ukawa umeendelea ndio maana nguvu wa siongo aliandika hii riwaya yake miaka ya sabini kujaribu kuzungumzia masuala ya yeah, alizi so let us look another eh, element of literature a plot eh, wapenzi wanafunzi kutoka kitabu cha tatu tuangalie upande wa plot eh, mat- mpangilio wa matukio kwamba plot is an arrangement of an event in a literary work the whole play is organized in only one act the scene break by conversation between a journalist and the editor who are typing an article the journalist finish typing and read it he explain how the whole incident took place where the city council warriors demolished the slum at the shant town near the country bus terminus the place is usually a busy place but on that day nobody was seen this was a clean that seat campaign hapa tunaanza kuangalia mpangilio wa matukio kwamba imepangiliwa katika eh, tendo moja yani mwanzo hii na nili riwaya yenyewe imejaribu kuunganishwa kwenye tendo moja one act eh, ina tendo moja mwanzo paka mwisho lakini imevunjwa vunjwa na sini mbali mbali lakini sasa katika mpangilio wa hama tukio tunajaribu kuambiwa kuelezewa na waandishi wa habari ambao ni pamoja na editor ambao wanajaribu kuonyesha matukio mwanzo mpaka mwisho kwamba hawa journalist ndio wanaotupa taarifa ndio hawa waandishi wa habari wanaojaribu kufanya uchunguzi katika eneo la uhuru market wanajaribu kuelezea ndio maana mwandishi ngugi wa Siongo alivyopangilia matukio yake amejaribu kutumia hawa journalist waandishi wa habari kuelezea tukio au mkasa wa maisha magumu katika eneo la uhuru market sasa tuangalie kwamba journalist ameanza kutuambia na nini we are told the life of njango family very poor tunajaribu kuambia kwamba ma journalist wanatuambia kwamba tunajaribu kuangazia maisha magumu katika familia ya njango The journalist continue with narration as people begin wake up. Tunaweza kuanza kuonyesha kwamba ma journalist wanajaribu kuendelea kutupa story kuhusu maisha ya watu, eh, slum dwellers ambao mwanzo kabisa wameja wake up na mwanzo tunajaribu kuonyesha kwamba jinsi watu wanavyo struggle na maisha yao. The journalist continue with narrating that as the day block people began engaging their daily activity eh, wanaendelea kutupa story kwamba watu wanajihusisha na shughuli mbalimbali katika eneo la uhuru market au hmm. nazo slum dwellers the journalist come in and take some photo and begin interview people to get their view on the story hapa hmm. tunaweza kuona kwamba waandishi wa habari wanajaribu kuendelea kuchukua ta, taarifa mbalimbali pamoja na picha kuwauliza watu kuhusu ni maisha yao ya koje Uh, plot focus on life of on swam swam slam dwera where journalist narrates the story of the people tunaanza kujaribu kuonyesha kwamba hawa uh, waandishi ndio tunaendelea kwenye upande wa uh, plot ambapo tunasema plot lazima ni mpangilio wa matukio kwamba mwandishi kapangiliaje matukio eh, mwanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu uelewe kwamba hii hey, riwaya this time tomorrow imejaribu kuzungumzia maisha magumu katika nchi ya Kenya watu wamenyang'anywa hadithi zao hawana sehemu ya kuishi ndio maana tunaanza this time tomorrow mtu anasema kwamba eh, siku ya, le, ya kesho itakuwaje eh, this time tomorrow kwamba siku ya kesho itakuwaje au maisha ya baadaye yatakuwaje watu wamekata tamaa watu wanahangaika maisha yao tunaona kwamba njago yao anajaribu kwamba tutaenda kuishi wapi na shoemaker anajaribu kusema kwamba basi serikali itu ituambie kwamba au tutengee eneo kwamba la kwenda kuishi maana hawana eneo la kuishi kwa hiyo mimi naitwa mwalimu karibu ndio tunjike mwalimu wa fasihi ya Kiingereza so let us proceed with another part yeah, which is language use figure of speech tuangalie tamazali za sema au lugha iliyotumika katika riwaya hii ya this time tomorrow The playwright has used simple language with full of figure of speech. Tuangalie mwandishi ngugi wa Siongo anajaribu kutumia lugha rahisi kabisa mwanzo mpaka mwisho. The first figure of speech symbolism. 
Kwa hiyo talk about symbolism is something that tend to present something else. Kwamba symbolism zinazoma ni kitu ambacho kinachosimama kwa kisha kitu flam. Example in a book uh, there is a there is a fifth uh, mushroom uh, symbolize the poor house or slum dweller. Kwa hiyo kuna fifth mushroom hapo ni, ni, ni symbolism ambayo inawakilisha the poor houses eh nyumba ambazo hazieleweki eh nyumba mbaya na hii imeonyeshwa katika ukurasa wa 35 as a figure of speech allusion eh? the falling of jericho in the bible hapo tunaanga kwamba allusion inazungumza kwamba ni, ni ni maneno ya kibiblia eh hii ni lugha ni lugha ya kibiblia ambayo the falling to kwa mfano kiangalia ukurasa wa 36 tunaomba sudden one was baka in the days of Joshua when the legendary walls of Jericho come tumbling down eh, referring to Jericho in the bible ukiangalia hii tuna imeonyeshwa katika biblia ukiangalia Jericho asema one was back in the day of Joshua when the legendary wall of Jericho come tumbling down also we found page 45 mm, and forgive as our sin we are late for our morning soup referring to the lord prayer in the bible tunaanza kuangalia kwamba eh kwenye biblia tena imeonyesha kwamba watu wanaomba wanasomba and forgive us our sin kwamba tusamee sisi waovu wenye dhambi we are late for our morning soup and also let us look another figure of speech simile hapo tunaangalia simile is na zita ni tashbiha mm, kwa kiswahili tunaweza ni tashbiha in a book shown page 36 jago and wanjiro share the flow as a bed kwa neno simili eneo tumika as ndio simili as as a bed jago and wanjiro share the flow as a bed and also another a figure of speech metaphor eh tunazoangalia kwamba ni tashis metaphor ni tashis example ni ni play shown page 45 eh, our daily bread our daily bread here it me viunganishi eh, metaphor to me viunganishi our daily bread and also figure of speech alteration hapo tunaangalia masuala ya consonant eh consonant zikojo maneno ambayo ya consonant zinafanana eh kwa mfano in play page 39 cock crow babes cry and the teen sm- clash cock crow babes cry and teen clash kona no c ambapo cock crow cock crow yani c ile hiyo tumia consonant ya mwanzo kabisa c tunafuatana cock crow c na c nyingine cry and the clash sisi zimetumia hiyo inaonyesha katika class ya 39 another figure of speech imagery mmm ambayo tunaongea kwamba ni lugha ya taswira sasa mtu ambaye ana lugha ya taswira a smooth skin this is on page 41 smooth skin hapo tunaangalia kwamba ngozi laini eh ambapo anatumia a smooth skin and also figure of speech saying misemo example ni ni play show on page 37 you sleep good sleep mm hapo msemo ambao unaonyesha kwamba you sleep good sleep huo ni msemo and also figure of speech personification hapo tunaweza kwamba kitu kinapewa sifa ambayo binadamu anaifanya. Kwa mfano the village was walking up. This is on page 39. The village was walking up. Kwa mfano kwa kweli kwanza kufikiria kwamba kwamba na nili kwamba kijiji kiliamka. Kwa hiyo ni kitu ambacho haiwezekani kwamba kijiji hakina uwezo wa kufanya kama binadamu. Kwa maana ukurasa wa 39 nasema kwamba the village was walking up. Kwa hiyo ni kitu ni personification na kitu kingine long live uhuru market long live market eh long live uhuru market kwamba ile eneo la soko ambapo kwamba long live kidumu eh, long live uhuru market long live market this is shown in page eh, 49 of class of 1990 so hizo ni personification so dear listener a student from form 3 and form 4 let us look at the element of literature eh, themes tuangalie za mila eh, za mila katika liwaya ya this time tomorrow the the main themes uh, land land and nation land and nation samila kubwa kabisa katika hii liwaya 
ni lendi ya inesi na unyasaji wa arizi ya watu wakona nyanganywa arizi lendi ya nation during colonialism and after independence e, kwa mpono unyanganywa wa arizi ulianza wati wa ukoloni na bada ya uhuru nji ya kenya watu watu wa ukoloni watu wanikuwa wananyanganywa wa arizi zao na masetras na bada ya uhuru waliendelewa kunya ni mana wali wa mabebelu au watu walio wachwa na mabebelu waliendelea kuwanyanganya arizi pamoja na serikali yenyewe as this shown on page 48 up to 53 when she make tell us about lendi a nation na watu tunaweza kuonyesha na muhusika ambaye ni shoe maker mmejaribu kutuambia katika ukurasa wa baranani mpaka 56 kuhusu masuala ya lendi a nation ajaribu kutuelezea wakati wa ukoloni tulikuwa tunanyanganywa arizi na baada ya uhuru unyanganyaji Walizi unaendelea. Also let us look at another James Puvat umaskini eh? Example in a play system to Jagos families poor slum dwellers are poor. Tunaanza kuona this is on page 41 and 50. Hapo tunaanza kuona katika familia ya Njago ni maskini kabisa pamoja na slum dwellers wenzake ambao walala hoi. Maisha yao ilikuwa ni magumu sana ndio maana katika familia ya Njago. Njago alikuwa analala chini, eh analalia sandalusi mifuko. And also let us look at another Zim's classes eh yeah, matabaka tunaweza kuangalia matabaka there is, there is a low class and the high classes uh, low classes represented by slum dwellers and high classes represented by pet bourgeoisie this is shown on page uh, 50 up to 54 hapo tunaweza katika ukurasa wa 50 mpaka 54 tunaweza ni sehemu ambayo inaonyesha kuna matabaka kuna tabaka la chini ambayo inaonyesha kwamba na watu walala hoi slum dwellers na tabaka la juu high classes ambayo inaonyesha kuonyesha na mabujwazia hao ni mabebelu hii inaonyeshwa katika riwaya ya this time tomorrow and also let us look on another themes disillusionment or disillusionment or disappointment watu wamekata tamaa eh masuala ya tamaa chuki tunaweza kuona imeonyesha kwamba zinaanza kuonyesha kuna chuki zinaanza kujitokeza tamaa mbali mbali zinaanza kuonyesha katika hii riwaya ambapo kuna chuki ambazo zinaanza kujaribu kujionyesha baina ya watu mabebelu wenyewe na waafrika wenyewe ambao wanafanya kazi za mabebelu kutengeneza chuki na tamaa mbalimbali wanaweza wafanyia waafrika wenzao au watu wa Kenya wenzao na hii inaonyeshwa katika ukurasa wa moja na msina tatu ambayo inaonyesha kwamba sehemu ambayo watu wamekata tamaa kabisa na maisha yao tukianza kuongea kuna shoe maker hmm, hadi ngumu ashindwa kuona kwamba wapi wataenda kuishi pamoja na njago and also let us look Anaza character tribalism eh? kuna ukabila ukabila hapa tunaweza tunaona kwa njago njago anamkataza mtoto wake wa si wanjiro kwamba sija kaolewa na sinjo kwa tunaweza hadi ya ukabila kwa sababu ni mtu wa kabila jingine and also ignorance and illiteracy tunaweza kuona ujinga na watu ambao kuna watu hawajasoma kina Tim Smith na Shoemaker ah hawajasoma and also let us look on superstition belief Uh, when first customer say why don't we hold a meeting with a stranger he wake in magic hapo tunaanza kuona kwamba kuna imani za kishirikina hapo tunaanza kuona kwamba wati wa mkutano walipokutana wananchi au slum dwellers pamoja na stranger sasa kuna baadhi ya first customer mteja mwingine kwa wa kwanza kabisa jibu kusema kwamba sasa kwa katika mkutano wetu tujipange mm? Tayari tuweke zindiko kwa ajili ya kupambana na hali yetu kupigania haki zetu lakini stranger yeye alikuwa amini katika masuala ya ushirikina yeye alikuwa anaamini katika masuala ya umoja and also let us look another things betray unyasaji eh una usaliti tunaanza kuona betray tunaanza usaliti nani msaliti ambao tunaanza kuna usaliti kama ambao inspector kiongo inspector kiongo ali betray slum dweller ali ali <coughs> saliti wenzake hao ni slum dwellers yule alikuwa ni police inspector sa police ambaye aliwa also wanjiro and njago wanjiro ambaye ni mama yake alimsaliti mama yake njago akaenda kwa asinjo tunaona kwamba kuna betrayal usaliti and also let us look at another themes unit and this unit hapo tunaanza kuona umoja kuna umoja mwanzoni kwa kuna umoja ambao ni jambo kuonyesha watu wanaungana kupigania masuala ya arizi yako lakini kuna umoja ambao kuna disunity ambao tunaanza kwamba wana kijiji walimkimbia stranger maana stranger walikuwa wajaribu kuwaungane pamoja kupigania haki zao lakini baadaye walimkimbia ambao inaonyesha kwamba kuna disunity and let us look on another themes position of women tunaanza kuangalia nafasi ya mwanamke ngugi wa siongo mwekaji e, e, women portrayed as a caretaker ambao tunaanza kwamba ni mama ambaye anajaribu kama 
ni mama mlezi eh, na ni mama mlezi ambaye ni, ni njago hmm? kama mzazi njago anaona kwamba ni mama ambaye nijaribu kumpa maadili mwanaye wanjiro and also women portrayed as gender discrimination anaona kwamba mtoto mwanamke ameonyeshwa ni mwanamke ambaye anayenyanyaswa anabaguliwa ambaye tunaona kwamba wanjiro atapelekwa shule lakini kaka yake alipelekwa shule and also women portrayed as hard worker person ambaye tunaweza kuona kwamba mwanamke ameonyeshwa kama kama ni mtu mpambanaji anayefanya kwa mfano njago mama alikuwa na ana kishukulisha na biashara na pika hoteli eh, na pika supu and also women portrayed as a true love ambaye mtu ambaye mwanamke ameonyeshwa kama mtu ambaye ni mwenye mapenzi mema ambao wanjiro anampenda mpenzi wake asinjo and also women portrayed as a traditionalist ambapo tunaweza kuona kwamba ambao ni njago ameonyeshwa kwamba ni mtu ambaye anashikilia uh, utamaduni kwamba hataki uh, mtoto wake aolewe na kabila jingine and also let us look at another element of literature Uh, which is a conflict tunaanza kwamba tumekelea kingine cha fasi ambapo tunaanza kwamba ni conflict migogoro mm, it is a intrapersonal conflict tunaanza kuona migogoro ya ndani ya mtu mwenye yeye mwenyewe ambao ni njago yeye mwenyewe anaanza kujiuliza kwamba wapi wataenda kuishi eh kwa sababu juzo kwamba forced to move unknown place kwamba unaona lazima mtu aende sehemu ambayo hawajui wenyewe kwamba wende tuende kuishi wapi ambapo na wanjira yeye mwenyewe because of poor life wanjira ni alikuwa na intrapersonal conflict kwa sababu alikuwa anajiuliza kwamba maisha yake maisha magumu mbona hivi hapo mama yangu ananikataza kuolewa na asinjo kisa ni kabila jingine and also we look on another conflict family conflict jago and wanjiro ambao tunaona kwamba mama na mtoto wake ambao ni wanjiro wanajaribu kugombana kwa sababu hataki aolewe na mtu mwingine kabila jingine and also we look on political conflict ambao between government officer and the slum dwellers. Tunaona kuna political masuala ya kisiasa. Mikukuru ambao kunaona mapoli mafsa policy na bado na struggle hapo upande wa serikali na wanapigana pamoja na slum dwellers kwa hiyo wasiandamane kuhusiana kupiganaji au migogoro ya kiarizi baina na serikali. And also conflict cultural conflict. Eh, migogoro ya kiarizi. Eh, ya kitamaduni cultural conflict mi, migogoro ya kitamaduni between European culture and African culture. Tunaweza kuona kwamba European culture ni vijana ambao wako modernized ambao kina, kama kina asinjo wajaribu kuelimisha kuendana na kisasa. Hata mtoto wake, mtoto wa njango ambaye ni wanjiro na yeye anapenda aende na maisha ya kisasa na maana anapigania maisha magumu kwamba wanalala chini kwa nini wasi maisha mazuri pamoja na African culture ambao hii African culture wanapigania tadina tadina, tadina tadino nisti akona pigania kwamba eh tamaduni zao zijaribu kuendelea so let us look eh uh, another element of literature message message we uh, we we'll, we'll look after get uh, zim so about message tunasoma hapo tunazipata baada ya kupata dhamira katika kitabu the first message unit is very important in any struggle hapo uchumbe tunaopata kwenye hili waya this time tomorrow kwamba umoja ni kitu cha muhimu sana katika masuala ya kupigania haki za watu and also tribalism is an outdated custom tunaanza kuona kwamba ukabila ni kitu kilichopitwa na wakati maana kinasababisha migogoro mbalimbali and also another themes message another message both boys and girls should be give equal right to education. Tunaweza kuona kwamba jinsi zote mbili wanawake na wana na wanaume kwamba lazima wawe na haki sawa ya kwenda shule. And another message, the trial is not good in any society. Kwamba usaliti sio mzuri katika kila jamii. And another message, classes in the society create conflict. Kwamba matabaka katika jamii yanatengeneza migogoro. And the last message, we should not believe in superstition. Bifu tu kwamba Ujumbe mwingine tunaopata kwamba tuachane na masuala ya mi, mila upotofu wa mi, kimila. So hizo tunaweza kuona kwamba dear student from form 7 and form 4. Uh, so you are supposed to know element of literature that you already explained and and explain deeply. Eh uh, wanafunzi kidogo wa kidato cha 3 na cha 4 muelewe kwamba hizi fan na mazuri katika riwaya hii mzielewe kwa umakini sana. Maana kuna maswali mbalimbali mbali yanaulizwa kupitia hizo element za literature kuna swali ambao utaulizwa kuhusiana na maswala ya message kwamba kwenye kitabu ya Zistam Tomorrow 
kuna message gani uliyopata kuna swali nauhusu na masuala ya zims zamira unaulizwa zamira characters unaulizwa title unaulizwa na pia utauzwa masuala ya setting style utaulizwa kwa lazima uelewe hii ni waya ya this time tomorrow let us look another element relevance tunaanza kuona kwamba kitabu kinahusianaje katika maisha yetu ya kijamii eh, ya koje maisha yetu the book is relevant to most african cant as known below hapa tunaanza kuona kwamba kitabu yenyewe au riwaya yenyewe kabisa inahusiana na maisha yetu ya Kiafrika au maisha yetu ya ujumla kabisa au katika jamii zetu za Kiafrika kwamba inahusiana kabisa because even our society there is a problem of land alienation hmm? hata kwenye jamii zetu matatizo ya unyang'anyi wa ardhi upo kwa mfano jikuta tajiri anatumia tekniki ya kumnyang'anya maskini kwa hiyo maswala anatumia serikali hiyo kwa sababu ana pesa anamnyang'anya ardhi mambo ni maskini and also there is a inch of tribalism kuna ukabila upo eh, hata makabila upo kwa mfano ukuta msukuma hataki kwamba amuoe aoe mchaga na mchaga hataki kuolewa na kabila jingine kwa kuna hiyo masuala ya ukabila upo sasa sasa wasukuma hawataki kuoa makabila mengine nataka waone wasukuma kwa wasukuma and also there is a elite even as well as inch of illiteracy late kwa masuala ya kuna masuala mbalimbali masuala ya watu ambao hawajasoma eh namba ya watu ambao hawajasoma ipo kabisa hata kwenye jamii yetu hata mimi mama yangu mzazi hajawahi kusoma hata darasa la kwanza kwa hiyo inaonyesha kwamba hii hali ya kutosoma ipo hata katika jamii zetu jamii mbalimbali and there's a, also there's a issue of classes matabaka eh matabaka yapo matabaka maskini kwa tajiri ipo eh dear listeners student from form 3 and form 4 thanks for listening me my name is Kaligodoto Njige a teacher of literature mpenzi mwanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu na cha nne asante kwa kunisikiliza kwa majina naitwa Kaligo Doto Njige mwalimu wa fasihi ya Kiingereza napenda kusema kwamba mwanafunzi kutoka kidato cha tatu uelewe kwamba tunapozungumzia eh, hili waya ya this time tomorrow inajaribu kuzungumzia eh, land alienation dhamira mbona za kuonyesha kwamba unyanyasaji wa ardhi watu wananyanganywa ardhi zao wewe wanashindwa waende wapi kwa maisha yao yanakuwa ni maisha ni magumu sana kwa hiyo leo kwamba kuna maswali ambayo yanaoulizwa kwenye maswali ya riwaya utaulizwa kwamba kuna ile swali linaweza likaja kwa tekniki mbalimbali inahitaji zamira zims kwa maana inahitaji zims kuna swali linajaribu kuzungumza maswali ya message na message jaribu kuzikupitia hizo zamira usizozipata kuna swali linahusiana na maswali ya characters utumie uchague wa usika eh, ambayo unajaribu kulioonyeshwa kwenye kitabu unaoapenda kuna swali linahusiana na maswali ya setting eh, kwamba mandhari yake ni wapi kwa hiyo jaribu ulocate zile eneo kuna swali na uhusiano masuala ya style, mitindo, mwandishi katumia mitindo gani? Kuna swali na uhusiano masuala ya title. E, Unauliza masuala ya kuhusiana na title. Eh, kwamba kichwa cha mwandishi ina reflect ya yomo ndani. Kuna swali na uhusiano masuala ya relevance. Eh, kuna swali na uhusiano masuala ya relevance kwamba kitabu kina uhusiano na maisha yetu ya uhalisi. Katika kuna swali unajaribu unaweza ukaja ukauliza masuala ya figure of speech, tamadhali za sehemu zilizotumika kwenye hii riwaya. Kwa hiyo lazima uelewe masuala kama hapo so don't forget subscribe like share and comment my my phone number is 0770861790 and another number 0747844986 msisahau ku subscribe ku like ku share na comment namba yangu ya simu ni 0710786 saba tisa na namba nyingine 0747484986 kwa majina naitwa mwalimu Kaligo Doto Njige mwalimu wa fasihi ya Kiingereza asanteni